Many people are already aware that the U.S. military has a strong interest in SpaceX's Starship, especially its potential for point-to-point -point payload delivery. Recently, the Department of the Air Force and SpaceX took a major step forward in that vision. Here's the story. On June 6, the Department of the Air Force released the Draft Environmental Impact Statement EIS for Starship Super Heavy Launches from Space Launch Complex 37SLC-37. This document reveals that SpaceX plans to build a new Starship launch site at this historic location. According to the EIS, SpaceX is proposing up to 76 Starship launches per year from SLC-37, along with up to 152 landings. These would include 76 landings of the Super Heavy booster, which would return minutes after launch, and another 76 landings of the Starship upper stage, which could return hours, days, or even years after its mission, depending on where it travels. Half of the launches are expected to occur at night. Some of the landings, particularly for early missions, may still take place offshore using drone ships, similar to current Falcon 9 operations. So, what does this have to do with the Starship point-to-point -point program? Well, let me explain. The Department of the Air Force owns the property at Space Launch Complex 37, most recently utilized by United Launch Alliance for launches of the Delta IV Heavy. The site was deactivated following the final Delta IV heavy launch in 2024. According to the draft environmental impact statement, the proposed action aims to advance U.S. space capabilities by establishing launch and landing infrastructure to support national security space missions consistent with U.S. policy objectives. While SpaceX currently operates two Starship launch pads at its private Starbase facility in Texas, none are located within a military installation capable of supporting high-cadence national security launch operations. Moreover, Starbase lacks the proximity to military ranges and operational infrastructure that a site like SLC-37 can offer. Alternatives, such as the Starship launch pad under construction at Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, are closer to military ranges, but are not expected to support the desired cadence of up to 76 launches per year. SpaceX currently conducts national security missions under the National Security Space Launch NSSL contract using its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. However, Starship is expected to be offered for future phases of this program. As I said, the U.S. Air Force has shown strong interest in the capabilities of Starship and has already awarded SpaceX a contract to study its potential for high-speed, point-to-point cargo transportation. This concept, which involves using orbital-class vehicles to deliver cargo or personnel across the globe in under an hour, has long been a goal in the aerospace sector. Starship is uniquely suited for this mission. Designed to achieve orbital velocity, it avoids the constraints of atmospheric flight, enabling rapid global transport unaffected by weather or airspace congestion. After reaching orbit, the Starship can coast at high speed before re-entering the atmosphere and landing at a distant destination. This capability holds particular value for the military, where rapid deployment of equipment, supplies, or personnel can be critical during crises or evolving mission scenarios. Starship is also capable of delivering significant payloads, up to 150 metric tons in a fully reusable configuration and up to 250 metric tons in expendable mode. In addition to its technical advantages, Starship aims to dramatically reduce launch costs. Though the system is still in development and operational costs are yet to be finalized, SpaceX targets a price point as low as two to three million dollars per launch, far lower than current launch vehicles. Space Launch Complex 37 is a really good place for this kind of mission. It is a site with both historical significance and the physical capacity to support a next-generation launch vehicle like SpaceX's Starship, originally built in the 1960s as part of the Apollo program. SLC-37 was designed to support the Saturn Moen and Saturn Cholby rockets. It was developed alongside neighboring SLC-34, with two pads, 37A and 37B, constructed. However, only Pad B was ever used for launches. 
Following the retirement of the Saturn program, the complex was decommissioned and mothballed in the early 1970s. It remained dormant until the early 2000s when United Launch Alliance reactivated SLC-37 for use with its Delta IV launch vehicles. Pad B supported both the Delta IV Medium and the larger Delta IV Heavy. The Medium variant was retired in August 2019, and the final Delta IV Heavy launch took place in April 2024, bringing the Pad's second chapter to a close. While the site carries historical weight, supporting a massive and complex rocket like Starship requires substantial upgrades. According to the Draft Environmental Impact Statement EIS, SpaceX plans to construct extensive launch, landing, and support infrastructure at SLC-37. This would include two launch pads, two launch mounts, two integration towers, diverter or flame trench structures, two landing pads, and two landing catch towers or test stands, similar to what the company has developed at Starbase in Texas. The planned infrastructure also includes facilities for propellant production and storage. These would feature a natural gas pretreatment system, a methane liquefier, and an air separation unit along with storage for liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen, liquid methane, gaseous methane, gaseous nitrogen, helium, and water. Additional infrastructure would cover lighting, utilities such as power, fiber optics, water, natural gas, nitrogen, and helium, as well as staging areas, storage, and general support facilities. Just recently, the ULA Bay at Space Launch Complex 37 was officially decommissioned to make way for SpaceX and Starship. I have to say, this decommissioning happened much faster than the one for the High Bay. What an end to an era! For transportation, Starship, Super Heavy, and other launch vehicle components will be transported to Space Launch Complex 37 from SpaceX's Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. These components will travel by sea via barge, departing from the port of Brownsville and arriving at Port Canaveral. From there, they will continue through the Banana River to dock either at the AF Wharf at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, CCNAS, or the Turn Basin at Kennedy Space Center, KSSE, following established maritime shipping lanes. Once on land, the components will be moved using existing designated haul routes on CCSFS and KSC to reach SLC-37. After launch and landing operations, SpaceX will carry out vehicle integration and refurbishment on-site as much as practicable. Oversized load trucks operating within applicable Florida Department of Transportation weight limits will be used to transport the hardware while the former ULA site at Space Launch Complex 37 was always a strong candidate, SpaceX had also considered building an entirely new launch facility at Cape Canaveral, known as SLC-50. However, the newly released draft environmental impact statement has ruled out that option, citing greater potential for environmental and archaeological harm. The proposed SLC-50 site is currently undeveloped green space, making it more sensitive to disruption. The development of SLC-50 is less ideal than the redevelopment of an existing SLC, the report states. Additionally, leveraging existing infrastructure would increase efficiency and reduce environmental impacts. SpaceX currently holds a right of limited entry that allows the company to begin initial preparations for converting Space Launch Complex 37 into a Starship launch facility. A full lease agreement between SpaceX and the U.S. Space Force is expected to follow the release of the final environmental impact statement. The final version of the EIS is expected to be released in the fall. Before that, the public will have an opportunity to weigh in during a formal comment period, which runs from June 13th through July 28th. During this time, a series of in-person meetings and one virtual presentation will be held to gather community feedback. Three public meetings are scheduled on Tuesday, July 8th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the American Police Hall of Fame and Museum in Titusville. On Wednesday, July 9th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Radisson Resort at the Port in Cape Canaveral. And on Thursday, July 10th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Dr. Jolie Smith Recreation Center in Cocoa.
Just a few miles north of SLC-37, SpaceX has constructed another Starship launch tower at Launch Complex 39A, a historic site located on NASA property at Kennedy Space Center. While the tower itself is largely complete, significant work remains to be done, including installation of a new launch mount, excavation, and construction of a flame trench, and the setup of propellant storage and plumbing systems required to load the rocket with supercooled fuels. SpaceX's proposed Starship operations at Launch Complex 39's A could include up to 44 launches and 88 landings annually. Combined with the capacity at SLC-37, the two Starship pads could support as many as 120 launches per year, with potentially twice as many landings, accounting for booster and upper stage returns. The Super Heavy booster is designed to return to the launch tower just minutes after liftoff, where it would be caught by a set of swiveling arms known as chopsticks. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage is intended to perform vertical landings at the end of its orbital missions. To date, SpaceX has only conducted suborbital test flights of Starship from its Texas facility, Starbase. However, the company has expressed its intention to conduct its first operational launch from Florida's Space Coast by the end of 2025. In the meantime, SpaceX continues to launch Falcon 9 missions from Space Launch Complex 40. SpaceX is bringing ambitious plans to Florida, and it's no surprise. Elon Musk has long stated that Florida will eventually handle the bulk of Starship launches, while Starbase in Texas will continue to serve as the primary site for development and testing to enable initial Starship missions from Florida before its Space Coast manufacturing, integration, and refurbishment facilities are fully operational. SpaceX plans to transport completed Super Heavy boosters and Starship upper stages from Starbase via Bar. This will help establish an early operational fleet in Florida while local infrastructure ramps up. Musk has also revealed plans to significantly increase Starship production, aiming to build around six new vehicles in the near term. Supporting such a production rate requires a large purpose-built facility, and Florida is making space for it. Among the $1.8 billion SpaceX is investing in the state is the development of a massive facility known as the Gigabay. According to SpaceX, the Florida Gigabay will stand 380 feet tall and offer approximately 46.5 million cubic feet of interior processing volume. The structure will feature 815,000 square feet of workspace, including ground-level areas, elevated platforms, and a top-floor space for meetings and operations. Designed to support Starship and Super Heavy vehicles up to 81 meters, 266 feet tall, the Gigabay will include 24 dedicated work cells for integration and refurbishment, as well as cranes capable of lifting up to 400 U.S. tons. With launch pads and manufacturing hubs in both Florida and Texas, SpaceX is positioning itself to accelerate the Starship program's launch cadence. The company has already conducted several suborbital test flights and continues to make steady progress. Looking further ahead, Musk has stated, Ultimately, we'll need to build far more ships than boosters, especially for Mars. You'll want to use the ship, dismantle it, and repurpose its materials on Mars, because they'll be incredibly valuable there. SpaceX estimates that a self-sustaining city on Mars would require approximately 1 million people and several million tons of cargo. Musk added, We can do this, and we can do it within 20 years. To be truly self-sustaining, Mars will need a complete industrial base. You can't be missing any piece. His long-term vision includes producing up to 1,000 starships per year to support interplanetary colonization, a bold step toward making life multiplanetary.